I've been in the marketing industry for 10 plus years at this point. And as uh, Jacob said, I'm the founder of Inholt Marketing. At this point, I really like to coach small businesses and founders through their marketing needs um, with an, a, a big emphasis on how to plan kind of smarter uh, work smarter, not harder kind of situations with all this experience that I've had in various realms of digital marketing. I want to help you achieve your next big milestone. So hopefully today through some note taking, feel free to take a screenshot if there's something that really resonates with you. You can walk away today with two to three tips on how to plan your editorial calendar for social media with more ease and with confidence. So on that note, I'm sure many of you who uh, are already working within social media are sick and tired of that content, content, content need, right? I have a lot of friends who um, are small business owners or who are artists and creatives and constantly feel like they need to create content for this larger content creating machine that is social media especially Instagram, TikTok, uh, we're definitely kind of beholden almost to this need to constantly be churning out content. And as small business owners, that can be really uh, a heartache for you because you have other things that you want to focus on and do. You may be running the books, you may be purchasing, you may be creating food, uh, a whole number of different things. And the idea of just adding more content to that can be a little disheartening, um, can be a little frustrating. So I don't want you to feel like you're gonna crack under this pressure to feed that social media machine. I like that this, uh, this quote right here, content is part of a single and indistinguishable flow, uh, meaning that content should be a part of everything that you're doing. So as you're working behind the scenes on creating your product, that's content. As you're working behind the scenes of playing an event, that's content. Content is almost every step of the way of your journey as a small business owner and touches almost everything that you do. It's not a separate silo. So when we think about social media in general, too, what is social media made of? It's a lot of different parts. It's a lot of different moving parts. We've got sort of listening and research and understanding of what's going on in the general um, audience and the general uh, atmosphere. We have engagement, things like community management, um, talking and outreach replies. That's that's sort of that engagement. We've got promotion, advertisement, you know, actually trying to sell your product to yourself, um, creating and running ads. And then of course, measurement. Um, measurement touches everything. What is What about your metrics, your analytics, um, how you measure and define success in social media? And then of course, what we feel is oftentimes the biggest part, but I just wanted to show that it is a piece of the pie is content marketing. That is the creation and curation of the things that you decide to put out on the internet for people to uh, interact with. So I'm going to go over today some steps for building your editorial calendar that will hopefully become um, a smooth and easy flow for you from here on out. If you want to take a screenshot of this, just so you have a checklist later on, go for it. Um, we're going to be talking about defining your goals, understanding your target audience. We're going to talk about how to brainstorm ideas for content, choosing the right channels to put your content out on. That's going to be a big one. Then building the content itself. My favorite, which is reviewing and analyzing your results. Um, I know I've worked with ECDI before on uh, measuring analytics and success. That's a big one. And then through everything, how to rinse and repeat. This is going to be a process that you iterate over and over and over again, just to make sure that you're nailing down the right content in the easiest fashion that requires a little less, the least amount of work from you. So jumping in, how to define your goals and understand your target audience. For me, research always leads to insights. This is going back to the basics of marketing, the basics of business development and your business plan. If you haven't done this already, Definitely take an afternoon, a weekend, just carve out one day on your calendar and just put a hold. You're going to need to define your goals. And by that, I mean your business goals in general. What are your business goals? Why are you even on social media? Really ask yourself those hard questions. Kind of <laughs> take a moment to journal through it, right? We're in January right now, the beginning of the year. We're talking about how to journal through, how to... Um, you know, revitalize various parts of our lives. Well, that should also be our business, right? What actions do you want your audience to take? And what story do you want to tell for them? 
So understanding all of that, ask yourselves those questions, really narrow down your goals. And then you want to understand your target audience as well. That's going to help you develop content that resonates best with them. Create fictional personas, audience personas. Understand who Bob is, who Amy is, and why they want to interact with your brand or your business. Understand their pain points and identifying solutions can help you also come up with content in order to speak to their needs. Understand their age, their gender, their income, location, and interests will make sure that you're creating content and subject matter that is relevant to your audience as opposed to um, content that just is not going to float with them. And you'll see that in the results as you analyze as well. So really get that down to the basics. If you haven't done these steps already, this is going to be your step one. Define your goals and understand your target audience. From here we can begin to brainstorm ideas. Um, after compiling your research and understanding your goals and audience, you're gonna have better insight into the content that resonates best with them. I also love this quote by Doug Kessler. I think this is a fantastic one. Traditional marketing talks at people, content marketing talks with them. It becomes seamless. It's not about sale, sale, sales. You don't wanna just sit there and promote yourself, promote your brand, promote your product over and over and over again. It's just not interesting. It's not engaging. Um, oftentimes when people talk about content um, and social media, you'll hear uh, this, this sort of tidbit, right? You don't, you don't go into a happy hour or cocktail party only coming in and talking about yourself. You don't interject yourself into a conversation to say, hey, I just released this brand new product and here's five reasons why you should buy it. No, you start a conversation and let that happen naturally. So content marketing talks with them about the things that they're already caring about and how you can fit into that picture. Oftentimes we talk about content pillars as well, and this is a helpful place to get started in understanding what kind of content might resonate best with your audience. Uh, they need to fulfill the needs and wants of your audience. So again, step one, we went through that research phase. We understand that um, Fictional Amy is in her 30s, she's single, um, and she likes to go out with her friends for happy hour. So now we know a little bit more about our target audience. What kind of things can we do for Amy that would be entertaining or inspirational? How can we educate Amy? How can we start a conversation with Amy? And how can we connect with Amy? Right below that promotion, you notice that this pillar is a little bit lower. If we were to look at all of these pillars as making up 100% of your social media content, the promotional aspect of it, the direct sale, the, hey, Amy, we have this product on sale for 50% off right now, or hey, Amy, you should join us for happy hour on Tuesdays right now, that's going to be less of your overall content. It's going to be about 20% or so. Um, we just don't want to inundate people with just the hard sale. Uh, they're not creating that connection with you then. They're not creating a relationship with you. So through all of these other pillars, entertaining, inspiration, education, conversation, and connection, we can create robust content for Amy or for Bob, who might be um, in his 40s with his family, uh, looking for um, a place to go and enjoy a family dinner so they don't have to make anything at home. <laughs> if you can't tell already, I'm kind of developing um, a content calendar for a restaurant at this point. And so how uh, are the audiences for this restaurant that we've researched and developed and we understand their persona based off of data that we've looked at? Who are these people and why are they coming to the restaurant? So thinking about these content pillars, we're going to go into um, what I like to think as three easy ways to tackle a 12-month calendar. Again, you can take a screenshot of this. I highly encourage it. This is kind of my way to break up a whole 12 months and easily develop um, just pinpoints for content that then you can fill in. Of course, as you plan ahead, you might want to think about major releases that you might have or a switch of menu. Maybe you know that um, Thanksgiving is going to be big for ordering a specific product. So looking all the way ahead to November, how can you work backwards from there? I really like to work backwards from a specific date because then you can kind of 
plan out your content and realize you don't have to scramble to suddenly fill up your social media with the appropriate amount of content. And we can talk a little bit later about what that appropriate amount of content is. But if we're looking at a whole 12 month calendar for a general social media account for any particular brand and um, spoilers, I am looking at a restaurant for this example, we can break things up into national holidays and special topic days. Special topic days are things like National Ice Cream Day or Teacher Appreciation Day. Those sort of like silly little holidays that span, um, you know, everybody's social media. Then you can look for local events that are relevant to your brand. Maybe um, FYI for anybody in Columbus, June 14th is 614 Day. That could be a really great opportunity to develop something specifically for a local audience like those in Columbus. It's fun. That's in June. You can start planning for that content now if you wanted to. And then um, the blue here on this is special releases. We're holding for user-generated content. I think user-generated content is a great way to pepper some um, extra little tidbits, some fun imagery into your content calendar that is a very low lift for you as a business owner. Special releases in this could be, you know, like I said, a menu release. Um, maybe you're coming out with a whole new line of products. Uh, you work mostly in soaps and then you know you're going to be coming out with bath bombs. And so that could be a special release. If you know when you want to have that release, begin to work backwards from that date. So looking at a fictional May for a fictional company, you can see that I've peppered some content throughout that suddenly um, takes up a good chunk of your calendar. You have content coming out every week. Most of the time, it's about four days a week of content. That feels pretty doable. So if we look at May and we decide to break it down more into what those dates are, you can see for this fictional restaurant, May 2024, May 1st, we say that's the start of National Celiac Awareness Month. So in theory, if that's something that your restaurant or your business wants to focus on, that's a great opportunity to sort of um, guide what kind of content you might put out on that entire month. You could start with May 1st with a special announcement. It's National Celiac Awareness Month. We're going to be focusing on gluten-free menu items. Then you could do something like maybe those green ones, right? Those are sort of um, just those those uh, more, let's see here, green local events relevant to your brand. So Thirsty Thursday happy hour. Again, we're a restaurant here, right? So maybe our Thirsty Thursdays are always special. We've got, you know, bottomless margaritas or something along those lines. Well, you're going to want to always kind of promote those. So you can just go ahead and earmark those on your calendar all the time. Um, we have Cinco de Mayo. Perhaps there's a very appropriate way you want to recognize that day. Uh, then Mother's Day falls on May 12th. So you want to set up a reminder ahead of time, again, working backwards to make those Mother's Day reservations. Maybe you have a celebrity chef that's going to be taking over. Um, you want to go ahead and promote that ahead of time as well. Think about the things that are happening within your ecosystem of your restaurant and how you can pepper that into your calendar ahead of time. And then I have some holds here for user-generated content. There's Memorial Day um, on May 27th, which could be either we're closed, we're celebrating Memorial Day, or come in if you are sick of the grill for our specials. And then National Hamburger Day is May 28th. So maybe you want to promote uh, a special hamburger menu item, or just the fact that you have delicious hamburgers, you have award-winning hamburgers. So by looking again at that national calendar up top, you can kind of hold those red marks and then work backwards from there. Okay, we know that we have, let's see here, five opportunities in May to talk about a national holiday or a national fun special thing like um, Hamburger Day. Then from there, we know that these local events are happening or local to our, our business. So we are always gonna be dealing with happy hour. Uh, we have, you know, guest celebrities coming in. And so we want to make sure that we promote that event, sell tickets for that event. Suddenly your May is filled up with content and any place where it's not and you feel like you need to put in something a little extra, you can do that user generated content in order to do that as well. So that's what a calendar looks like in action. You can do this for every single month. And, you know, we're in January right now. Maybe you're not sure yet of everything that you're going to have planned for October or November. 
you can still plan those larger things in advance and then come back two or three months later and pepper in those smaller moments, those um, you know local events or your booking of a special celebrity chef or a band that is coming in. So as you get closer to that month, you can pull out your calendar again and say, well, let's look at this again. What kind of content can we prepare for? I like to look overall at a 12 month in advance calendar, but then break it down by quarter. Um, at the start of a quarter, look ahead and say, what can we plan for? What do we need? What releases are we having? Um, and make sure that your calendar just looks nice and robust, but you've planned ahead so you're not scrambling every single month. So the next thing is, all right, you've got your, you've researched your audience, you know what they like, you know the topics that are gonna resonate with them and you've kind of earmarked your calendar for let's say a quarter. Let's say we're planning ahead for spring quarter. Um, what channels do you end up choosing? I would say, again, this is from research, your insights from your research will understand where your audience is being most active. Um, I like to say that Instagram is great for more local audiences. Um, you know, again, your restaurants, your food trucks, people who want to resonate solely with a local audience. TikTok is fantastic if you're trying to reach a much more global audience. Even if you are a local brand and you are shipping, say, internationally or nationally, TikTok, you're definitely going to want to create some content for TikTok. Facebook's great for events and news still. Um, you know, I wouldn't go through and do the exact same content on every channel. I just think that that's overwhelming a bit. But again, think about where your audience is and how they're using that platform is going to help you understand what kind of content to create for it. So I definitely say that if you are planning any events, still continue to use Facebook for that. And then posting any sort of news articles, accolades, that's a great place for Facebook. LinkedIn, you're going to be more professional, thought leadership based, perhaps event based, but not necessarily your happy hour events. Think more of your webinar events or your conference events, depending on what your business is. Twitter slash formerly X. Honestly, friends, uh, I'm it's 2024. This is up in the air for me, even as somebody who has managed content and social media for 10 plus years. Uh, <laughs> We're just not quite sure how things are shaking out on that platform. Um, I think this is a case by case basis, especially if you already exist on that platform and you have a highly engaged audience, you probably don't want to absolutely delete it or drop that. But it might not be something that you need to break into if you don't already have a channel active there. Don't forget that emails and blogs are also channels that can align with your purpose. Um, emails, especially, um, we'll say emails and SMS messaging. Those are both just sort of direct messaging uh, channels that you can use to promote um, a special menu item or a happy hour or a limited edition product release. Uh, also, collecting email and um, phone numbers for SMS lets you immediately directly engage with your audience as opposed to waiting for the algorithm to deliver them the content, if at all, that you are putting out. And then blogs are important for SEO purposes. Blogs um, allow you to create content on the web, on your website or on a blogging platform that when somebody searches for you or for uh, something subject matter that is very closely related to you, it can bring them to your brand and provide them with more information and develop a, a deeper connection in a way that they might not have normally found you. So those are the channels that you could potentially choose from. But when deciding what channel to choose from, consider these things. And really, we're talking about your budget. I don't mean just a financial budget, but your time is a budget. Your actual physical resources are a budget, not to mention your energy or the energy of the person having to create this content. And then the effectiveness of all of this together. <clears throat> so your time, because you're creating content. You're not going to want to create unique content for every single one of these channels. If there's only three people working for you, it doesn't make sense. Your physical resources, you might only have um, a cell phone that you can use to create content with, not necessarily like a full on um, 
movie production studio in order to create really engaging videos. Not that you need that to create an engaging video, by the way. You can definitely do it with just your cell phone. But, you know, do you have somebody that can come in and take really fantastic product photography for you? If not, that's a consideration. That's a budget consideration. Um, your energy too, right? Uh, this is all about working smarter, not harder. Um, by planning out your content calendar in advance, you can begin to see oh, we might want to hire a freelancer in order to capture this product for us ahead of time so that we have plenty of content to use, like visual content to use. Or, you know, we have a product release and we don't know how to talk about it, but we know it's happening in six months. Let's hire a freelance writer right now, somebody that can help us write about the product, product description, something engaging. So that way we don't have to worry about it when the time comes. These are all ways that you can... Um, budget with your energy too. All right. So next we're going to jump into building your editorial calendar itself. Um, you can definitely talk about content calendar management uh, as being a way to outline everything. So you can use Google Sheets, Excel, as very, very, um, you know, scrappy ways of managing your content. Or you could uh, pay for a content management tool to plan out everything in advance, um, schedule everything in advance. I would say batch content create too. So sit down um, a, a few hours each month to focus on content creation using a mix of images, videos, graphics, uh, and then user-generated content. Again, this becomes the easy one. User-generated content is, I love to go to coffee shops. I take a lot of photos when I go to coffee shops. Those coffee shops will tend to use my photos sometimes in their content as well. So it might show up in their stream. And it's, you know, they're working really smart on that. They are seeing people who are engaged with their brand um, that are taking some photos that highlight the product and they're using it as opposed to spending time and resources taking their own photos. It's just engaging that way too. And then by using the scheduling tools, you can A-B test uh, posting to different times and days to see what works best for your brand, for your audience. It's all about keeping track of analytics on this as well. Um, I would also say using automation whenever possible and funnel questions to a central source will help save some time and energy. So by automations, I mean you can set up automated replies on Instagram and Facebook Messenger um, that immediately might answer your top question or funnel questions to an email address, right? So by funneling everything through, you're not spending so many hours having to open up that app to, you know, message people or realize that you're messaging people or that you have messages waiting um, by kind of using an automated process, depending on your resources. Again, you can kind of capture all of those incoming messages and funnel them through or be able to answer the most asked question. Here's some ideas for posts as well. Like I said, user generated content um, is great takes and cuts down a lot of your time. Always ask if you can use that photo. Um, I just think that that's a really good practice as far as social media management's concerned. Um, and just, you know, the kind thing to do. Hey, we really, really love your photo. Like you did such a great job with capturing this moment. Do you mind if we post it on our account? It's just a really easy yes or no kind of question. Um, and then uh, always credit them in the post too. You know, it's just like one of those ways that you can be nice for free <laughs> and you can do something nice for free for someone. Think about evergreen images. Um, a couple moments ago, I was describing a product release in let's say October um, and you know that you need to plan ahead for it. Well, when you have that physical product or even a prototype of that product, pay a professional to take some great product photography for you. Um, then you can use that throughout the course of teasing your product, releasing your product, and post-releasing that product to drive more attention to it. You don't have to worry about taking those photos. They already exist. <clears throat> um, and then quotes too. I think quotes can be kind of fun, a way to pepper in content that's very easy lift for you. So maybe it's a review Maybe it's a great comment on a previous post that's really, really funny and that resonates with your audience. If your brand is cheeky, uh, you can use that quote as just some, some quick content. If you have only one post scheduled for the entire week and you're like, I really want to make sure that I get another post out there. I want to meet that two posts a week mark. 
we'll see if you have any like funny quotes or comments from somebody or maybe something inspirational too. Um, and using that as a piece of content that should be a relatively easy lift for you. But make sure again, that it goes back to those content pillars and that it resonates with your audience. So, you know, is it educational, entertaining, conversational, something along those lines. And then also video. Video is a big, you know, big driver on social media right now. We talk often about how important video is on um, Instagram Reels and on TikTok, how the algorithm really likes videos. So here's ways that you can create videos that hopefully aren't too strenuous for you. You can utilize the duet and stitch content um, option on both TikTok and Instagram by basically using content that has already been produced. A duet can allow for you to have a reaction video to someone else's content. Um, and a stitch could be, you know, you answering a question to someone's video. So, you know, maybe it's somebody, maybe it's like an awesome influencer, micro influencer here in Columbus doing some sort of video about, I don't know where the best place to get happy hour is anymore. Like I've been to everywhere in the city. You could do a stitch and then in that stitch, offer up, you know, like, hey, we're a hidden gem. We have a happy hour. Here are our specials. We'll see you on Thursday. It can be tutorials. Um, I think this is an easy one to also generate content for. It can be a how-to life hack or a demo. Figure out what people, are, again, are searching for in relation to what it is that you produce, right? And so, again, research, insights, understanding your audience, super important. Almost everything always goes back to understanding who your audience is and why they care about your product. So if you know what people are searching for as it relates to your industry, you can create videos that help solve these problems. This is really great for TikTok as well. Um, little hint, TikTok is one of the most widely used uh, search engines at this point, um, especially if your audience is Gen Z related or even earlier to mid millennial related. Um, TikTok is becoming a place where they are searching for answers to subject matter. So again, if you are a brand and you know that people are have certain questions about your industry, you can use TikTok to get in front of a much wider audience answering those questions by creating how-to or tutorial videos. And then just storytelling in general. You know, you can humanize your brand by doing like a day in the lifestyle content. Maybe it's behind the scenes videos of getting ready for an event or um, producing a certain product on a production line. Um, maybe it's creating a, a beautiful special dish that has like a sauce that slow-mo, let that sauce come down on that dish. Um, get ready with me videos are also really important or exciting for people. You know, um, I think the last time I talked about this content, I suggested something along the lines of get ready with me for this farmer's market. And it's all about getting set up for a farmer's market. You know, people love the kind of behind the scenes and it really humanizes your brand and humanizes you. Um, people can relate to that really easily. So these are three ideas for videos. I hope some of these stick. Now, here's a really fun question that became something that happened in 2023 that we've been talking about, and I definitely want to address this. Um, can AI help with editorial calendars? I'm a big proponent for AI. Yeah, I think AI is great. I think I definitely use it um, in many different facets of my career at this point. I do not see it replacing anything that I do because there's still a lot of flaws with AI, but it's a great way to get um, extra ideas flowing, or if you're particularly stuck, um, use AI, ask AI for a little bit of help. Um, it can be great for creating um, automated content generation, copyright assistance, content calendar management. You can jump into chat GPT, tell it a little bit about your brand, your product, your audience, and say, I would like 10 ideas for posts that resonate with my audience in the month of June and just see what it comes up with. It might not be winners. They might not all be winners, but you might be able to find something within what it gives back that then triggers an idea for you that allows your brain to spin and think of something new. Um, especially with copyright assistance, you know, um, making sure that maybe all of your posts are within sort of that same brand voice. So maybe you've already drafted all of your posts for the month. Well, why not just run it through ChatGPT and ask it to adjust to make sure that the voice is the same for all of it. You're gonna have to tell ChatGPT Chat your voice and your brand and your tone and your audience, 
but then it can kind of create um, suggestions for, hey, I don't think that this post really aligns. Here's how I would write it instead. If you're looking for consistency across the board, that's great. I would definitely do it that way. Or let's say you are writing specifically for Instagram and you want to create a, a post for LinkedIn. I don't know how many of you spend time in both of those channels, but they're kind of different. They have a different audience and different intended use. So the fun emoji, maybe irrelevant conversation that happens on Instagram would not fly as well on LinkedIn. You can ask AI to help you um, rewrite for that specific channel. So here's your Instagram post. Ask it to um, you know, provide you two or three examples of how that post could sound for a LinkedIn audience instead. Ask it to make it a little bit more professional, um, a little bit more about thought leadership, and then use that as a jumping off board. Things to watch out for, though, when using AI, tone, brand, and consistency. It's something that you will have to train it on, which could take some time, and it could get it wrong. Um, context and relevance, too. Just, I can't tell you how many times I've ended up spending time correcting ChatGPT as well, making sure that they know, like, hey, we're not, our brand isn't this cheeky, or our brand isn't this, like, cutesy. Um, and then just you don't really want to use it for audience engagement and responses. I really feel that those are best left to a human element um, because of context, right? Human context is so important. So AI can help cut down some of the time used to create editorial calendar content, but it's not going to do all of the work for you. All right, so we've done everything. Now we're going to review. Where are the places on social media and what are the things that we want to look out for um, when it comes to your content and how it performed. All right, social media engagement. What channels have the most engagement and why? Great, great uh, thing to look for. Um, if you're keeping track of all your posts, which I definitely recommend that you should, even if you're a small team, because again, doing all the work up front will help save you time in figuring out what content to create in the future. So what topics and formats are people engaging with? Um, are they engaging more with your user-generated content? Are they engaging more with a topic around education versus um, entertainment? Are people clicking on any of your links? Um, if you're using a link tree, go through and see, you know, what content that you're pushing people to, are they engaging with the most and clicking on a link? And then learn from your audience. Oh my gosh, please engage with your audience. Read the comments, um, engage with them. Keep track of that sentiment that they're having about your brand. Then with email engagement, um, are you getting new subscribers in? Is that coming from social? Is that coming from somewhere specific? Look at your open rates and click-through rates too. Your open rates are gonna be able to tell you whether or not your um, subject matter is engaging and your click-through rates is gonna be able to tell you, are people resonating with the email once it's actually opened? Are you driving people to content and, and driving them to click through to something else in an appropriate way? And then uh, conversions as well, like whether or not you are selling tickets, um, RSVPs or downloads for something um, through that email that could be a sign of whether or not your content is working and if it's engaging. And then website engagement. If you have a website and you have analytics, um, please have analytics connected to your website because you're gonna be able to see things like most viewed pages, um, referrals, referral channels. You know, it, Are your audiences coming to you from um, Twitter? Are they coming to you from LinkedIn? Are they coming to you from email? Are they coming to you from a different Columbus blog? You're gonna be able to find that out if you have analytics attached to your website. And then are you getting new users or returning users and at what rate? And then the time spent on site. Time spent on site can kind of fluctuate. So if you have uh, people that are clicking on a page and just immediately bouncing off, could mean that their content is not um, engaging or it's not what they wanted. If they're spending too long on your site too, that might show that they can't find the things that they're looking for. So. As you look at time on site, I think it's really dependent on the page itself and the content that you're providing and what you're trying to get people to do. And from there, you can develop a good idea is what, how much time is appropriate on this page. All right, breathe. Whew. Okay, we've done all of this. We've created a content calendar for the year by looking through our audience, understanding them, um, looking at our channels, brainstorming ideas, creating a content calendar, creating the content itself, reviewing it, analyzing it. We breathe and then we rinse and repeat.
And how often this process happens might be dependent on how large your brand is, um, how your content is performing in general. You might want to do this once a year or you might want to do this once a quarter. Um, and again, that's all dependent on your resources and where you're kind of at, how large your brand is. It's important to constantly be redoing these processes. Did your audience change? Did your content calendar, you know, your content buckets need to change because your audience changed? If you looked at your analytics, um, did certain content bomb or did certain content really blow up in a great way? You're going to want to take a look at everything um, at least once a year and decide, all right, next year we're going to focus more on this type of content for this type of audience because we saw big success with that. Going to go over some free and cheap tools. Feel free to take a screenshot of this as well. So there are some free tools out there for content creation and content management. Um, there is, of course, Meta, which is uh, Facebook and Instagram. They're their native tool. It's um, you know there's some pros there. It's easy to use. Um, you can schedule stories. You can tag products. You can easily purchase ads if that's something that you want to do. But there's no Facebook group management if you do have a Facebook group. Updates are confusing. Sometimes they change the interface and how things work, and you got to dig a little bit through some um, user posts or through Reddit to understand the changes to Meta. Later is a great free tool and a cheap monthly tool if you want to pay for the um, premium version. It's inexpensive. It owns the link tree, which is completely integrated into their program, and it auto publishes to TikTok. So if you're creating TikTok content, not natively in the app, but through a different program, you can auto publish to TikTok. Um, API, the thing that connects it to different social media channels does disconnect regularly and there's no real product tagging. So if you have a product store, you can't tag using later. There's also Buffer, which is free or the you know premium starts at $5 a month. It has Canva in the integration. Many of you might be using Canva as a visual content creation tool. It supports Facebook groups if that's a part of your channel and your strategy. And it does have Shopify integration if Shopify is something that you're already using. Again, no product tagging, and it doesn't auto-publish to TikTok. Um, then there's also Hootsuite, uh, which is free, but the premium version is $49 a month. Again, Canva integration, the UI is fantastic, supports so many different channels. But again, no product tagging and it can become very expensive. So something like Hootsuite might be if you are a larger brand. Some analytic tools to look at here too. Um, I would highly recommend um, connecting Google Analytics to your website if you have not done so already. Um, it really helps you understand traffic sources. You can set up goals and track them. When it comes to the analytics side of thing, this is fantastic. And then Canva and Vimeo are both creative tools. Canva for creating social media templates that are all within your brand. Um, they have plenty of photos and graphics available, especially at the $13 a month for their premium. Very reasonable, very much worth it. Um, and it's great for batch content creation as well. So thinking about um, creating a template and then just batch creating content from there can be pretty easy. Then again, it cuts down on time for you. Um, you can also create some fairly engaging Instagram stories uh, that are movable uh, images with Canva. And then Vimeo if you need to do any sort of video editing. All right. So we're gone. we've gone through a good chunk of this. I know we've been working fast. I really appreciate all of you hanging in there. I'm going to save some room for some questions, um, but I just want to, you know, remind you, keep it manageable. I know that we've gone through a lot today, um, so let's take a breather. You might be feeling a little overwhelmed. Remember, setting boundaries, not just in your personal life, but in your professional life is super important, especially for those of you that are small business owners where that crossover between professional and um, personal is a very blurry line. So block off times for this and only concentrate on it during those blocked off times. Um, make sure that you honor those times as well. Uh, set boundaries on who you follow and see on social media. Uh, that's just sort of a um, boundary to set as far as your mental health is concerned. And don't hesitate to hide a user if that's going to help you have better social media mental health. Track and adjust again, 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 keeping track of those analytics. If there's one thing that you take away from today, I do hope it is that analytics are super important. 
Um, it does more than just help you create good content. It helps you spend less time on creating that content. And also by tracking your hours uh, spent on creating certain types of content, you can see if it's possible to cut down on those hours in the future. Um, and then get away from the screen. Um, beyond setting yourself timers, find ways to step back from your laptop or phone, um, going out for walks, gyms, reading, cooking, something, just napping, closing your eyes and taking 10 minutes away from the screen is going to help so much. So big takeaways here. Research leads to insights. Please, please, please start with those first two steps we talked about is understanding your, your own goals as a business, understanding why it is that you're creating the thing that you're creating. Why are you on social media? What do you hope to achieve? And then understanding your audience. That's going to drive everything moving forward. Then divide up your month, quarter, and year into national, local, and special topics. Um, start today and work into the future or, you know, go at a quarter at a time if going 12 months seems too overwhelming for you. Really understand your resources and be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself and your team. Understand your resources and pick the right channels and content accordingly. Maybe you want to break into a new channel this year. I would say don't just jump into it without confronting your team about it, making sure you have the resources and plan ahead. You heard me talk about TikTok. Maybe you're not on there. Maybe it sounds like a place that you want to go. Breathe for a moment. Look at your resources. See how you can combine resources to do it. Who's going to be handling it? And maybe a slow start into TikTok is great for you. Maybe you build up to it. Okay, we want to do TikTok this year. Let's set a you know a TikTok date by March or April, and let's spend the next couple of months making sure that we can handle it internally. Make use of AI to help if you're feeling stuck or need inspiration. Um, nothing against AI. I love using it. And then always analyze your efforts too. Always look at your results. Um, keep track of your analytics and take time. You know, make sure maybe at the end of the quarter. For one day, you're just going to look at those results, look at those analytics, look at your posts, and you're gonna see what kind of story you can tell with that data, and then readjust your content based off of that. So I wanted to thank you today for listening, for listening to me talk about content creation and how to set yourself up for success this year. Thank you again, too. And I just wanted to say, if you want to talk about editorial calendars for this year, send me an email. My email address is listed here. We'll talk about a special ECDI workshop pricing for you uh, specifically to come up with your content calendar for the year.